Hello, on a previous video, we proved using the squeeze theorem that um, the sine, the limit, as theta goes to zero, the sine of theta over theta is equal to one. In this video, we're going to prove that the limit of theta as it goes to zero of one minus the cosine of theta over theta is equal to in this case zero. All right, if you notice again, I can't do substitution, so I'm going to do some trig manipulation and I am going to take the limit. Oops, let me undo that. That's, I don't know how that happened. The limit as theta goes to zero of one minus the cosine of theta over theta. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it by the conjugate. One plus the cosine of theta over 1 plus the cosine of theta. And the reason I'm doing that is I know that this basic identity, which I use quite often in my calculus class, that the cosine squared theta plus uh, the sine squared of theta is equal to 1. So that means the sine squared of theta is equal to 1 minus the cosine of squared theta. So I'm going to use this identity over here as I do my limit, because I'll be able to simplify the numerator. So now I have the limit as theta goes to 0 of 1 minus cosine squared theta, because these are conjugates. So I just need to take 1 times 1 and get 1 minus cosine theta times cosine theta is cosine squared theta all over theta times 1 plus cosine theta. Okay, now I'm not distributing that theta. I think I've talked about that in class. Make sure you keep these denominators simplified. This is equal to the limit as theta goes to 0. And you can see I can put in sine squared theta. over theta times 1 plus the cosine of theta. My next step means I'm going to break this up into two separate fractions. One being the sine of theta over theta times the sine of theta over 1 plus the cosine of theta. And one of the properties we learned, if you look at these as two separate functions, where this is f and this is g, I think we wrote down that the limit, just to recall, this is not part of the proof, of x as f of x times g of x, if you remember that. And if f of x has a limit of l and g of x has a limit of k, and you can see that on previous notes, this was going to be l times k. So what I need to do is figure out the limits of each of these together and multiply them together. In other words, I can write it as two separate limits. The limit as theta goes to zero of the sine of theta over theta times the limit of theta as theta goes to zero of the sine of theta over one plus cosine theta. Well, this limit right here we did in a previous video. It's this limit. So this is going to be one 
times. Now in here I can do direct substitution. So I have the sine of 0 over 1 plus the cosine of 0. So this is equal to, I'm going to multiply this by 1, it's not going to change anything. 0, that's what the sine of 0 is, over 1 plus 1. Well, this is 0. Therefore, I'm done with my proof. Q, E, D. And I'm very happy.